whiskies that combine peat and sherry. I think it's a match made in heaven. You get smoky and sweet, which is a great contrast on the palate. Quite possibly the only upside that has come from the restricted travel over the last couple of years has been the ability to pick up travel exclusive whiskies that we might not otherwise be able to get. Today that's what I want to jump into with you guys, Lefroig PX cask. This one as, as I suggested is a travel exclusive, one liter bottle. Um, and I'm very pleased to be able to grab it. I'm a big Lefroig fan and um, I'm a fan of sherried influence whiskey that uh, marriage between sherry and peat goes very well in my opinion. So I had tried the Lefroig Sherry Oak 10 and uh, was very keen to see this as a comparison. I'll put a link in the video so you can check out the Sherry Oak 10 Lefroig tasting and review as well. Okay, so the Lefroig PX cask as mentioned, is a travel retail exclusive, one liter bottle, uh, fantastic ABV at 48% ABV, which is a great jump up from the standard Lefroig 10 in Australia that only comes at the bare minimum 40%. And uh, if you know your sherry, Oloroso is more of a, a nutty sherry influence, whereas the PX Pedro Jimenez has more of a sweeter influence. So as per the normal Lefroig 10, the first maturation is in the ex-bourbon casks, followed by a transfer into quarter casks, and finally the third maturation is in the uh, large European oak PX casks. Once it's over 46%, that means generally it's not chill filtered. So if you know, please let me know down in the comments below if uh, it is indeed non-chill filtered once we get past that 46% ABV. Let's pour a dram. That's a good cork pop, right? And begin with the nosing. Okay. Definitely has that red kind of tinge to it, but I don't know how much of that is coming from the PX cask and how much is artificially added to the Lefroig. Uh, I can smell it from here. <laughs> when I first opened this bottle of the Lefroig uh, PX, uh, it was, uh, I was a little worried because it was ridiculously sweet the first pour and I was like, oh, it's almost sickly sweet, a little too much. And thankfully that sort of subdued over time, but that initial pour did have me worried. Let's see now what we get on the nose. Ah, man, I love, I love the nose on a Laphroaig. The medicinal note is so strong on this one. The iodine, some people say TCP, band-aids, hospitals. There's the mossiness, that, that earthy tone, it's almost like seaweed. The sherry notes are a little harder to pick out because so many of the other notes on the Lefroig are very prominent and, and very robust and intense scents in their own right. I've probably had this bottle for a couple of months, so it's nice to sort of give it some time. There's about, you know, it's half full or half empty, depending on whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. I'm certainly an optimist. And uh, why not? You know, you have a lot of whiskey to enjoy. What's not to be optimistic about, right? There's a tiny bit of the oakiness, but it's further back. Also getting a little faint cola note that is far more prominent on the sherry oak finish 10 year old Lefroig. A little bit of the sweetness is coming across now from the PX. Absolutely an enjoyable nose if you're a fan of Lefroig, right in the wheelhouse. Okay, let's try now on the palate. Slanja.
Mm. Oh. Great. Really good at 48%. It's not a big smack in the face from the ABV at all. Um, as per what the nose was implying to me, it, it is uh, a little more watery than uh, a typical Laphroaig in my in my opinion. The peat is there. The, the, the first initial note is the PX. You're getting that sweetness come across and the medicinal notes. And then there's a lovely warmth that fills your mouth. And then as the PX sweetness subsides, you're left with that PT mossy and ashy uh, note all over the sides of my mouth, across my palate, and it's lovely. If you're a fan of Laphroaig, you will most certainly be a fan of the Laphroaig PX cask. It's, um, it's not anything groundbreaking or earth-shatteringly different to what they normally do. It's probably a nice alternative to add a little more sweetness into the Laphroaig typical profile. When I return to the nose now, there's this really gorgeous sour cherry note, almost crossing over into cherry cola. There's very much from that peatiness, there's so much minerality that, that comes through that almost rainforest sense, even crossing into that sort of rainforest stream more than the coastal note for me. It's just a, a, a really pleasing nose. If you're someone who's a fan of big, hefty, intense aromas and flavors on the palate, this will be absolutely the kind of whiskey that you want to pick up. Now, I have seen a lot of this uh, in Australia floating around online retailers, not the easiest Laphroaig to come by, but it's it's still out there very much. You can find this if you are willing to sort of look around a little bit. It's in the range of about 200 Australian dollars, depending on you know where you find it, but expect to pay around that much. The nose has subdued a touch now. The, the peat has almost uh, wafted away and we're left with a lot more of the sweetness now and the, the underlying sweetness is more forward. The, the heavy medicinal notes that were present on the first uh, nosing have also subdued. Or maybe I've just become a little accustomed to them. Let's try now on the palate for the second sip and the finish. Hmm. It's mellows out. It's far more approachable on the second sip, on the finish. It's way more subdued. Perhaps that my palate has acclimated to the peaty and the medicinal and the smoky notes. Really nice balance between the two. As I say, I'm a, a big fan of whiskies that combine peat and sherry. I think it's a match made in heaven. You get smoky and sweet, which is a great contrast on the palate. And this has been done very well in this. It is much more watery than other Laphroaigs that I've, that I've tried, which is a little strange. I would absolutely recommend this, but that's probably not saying a lot given that I'd virtually recommend any Laphroaig there is. It's my absolute favorite. I haven't had a bad one yet, but the, the wateriness is kind of what lets it down a little bit. It's not oily or thick on the palate. It's, it's still nice, don't get me wrong, but it would, at 48%, I kind of expected a little more mouthfeel and, and body to this whiskey. A lot of ashiness left on my palate now, which is very pleasing for a, a peat head. 
it's always nice to get your hands on a travel retail exclusive that you might not otherwise get to try. So big fan of Laphroaig. So also a big fan of the Laphroaig PX cask. Thank you guys for checking this one out. If you like the video, please leave a like on it. Click on subscribe and hit the bell notification button to be notified of each new video that I release. As always, enjoy your whiskey responsibly. Cheers, guys.